A worldview is an underlying model of reality that explains the universe and our place in it. Our worldview determines how we see reality and answers the most important question, what is the meaning and purpose of human existence? In this video, we will examine the three prominent worldviews, scientific materialism, religion, and scientific spirituality. A worldview is created by interconnected and mutually compatible beliefs. Since beliefs are foundational to our existence, it's natural to assume they are true. Examining and changing our beliefs is difficult, because doing so is in direct conflict to our core survival mechanisms of conformity and the rigidity of belief structures. For much of human history, our survival has been constantly threatened by war, scarcity of food, disease, and natural disasters. Since our chances of survival are better with our tribe than on our own, we instinctively believe in whatever our tribe believes, fostering conformity. There's a good chance you believe what your parents believed, and your children will be brought up to believe what you do. This mechanism of rigidity ensures that we can serve resources for survival, because changing our beliefs is costly and causes upheaval. It's far easier to stay with the beliefs we have, regardless of how counterproductive they are. The modern world has moved beyond the struggle for survival. This freedom allows us to examine our beliefs and see them as tools. Just as we discard tools when better ones become available, we should discard old and dysfunctional beliefs. A great leap forward in human consciousness took place with the growth of science, which is founded upon scientific attitude and scientific method. Scientific attitude requires the understanding that there is no real truth, only models of reality. It's the data that's of importance. If a model of reality cannot explain the data, it is abandoned. Likewise, when a better model of reality is constructed, the old model is discarded. This approach provides objectivity and flexibility. Over time, the progression of better models has allowed science to better explain reality. The second component of science is the self-correcting and evolutionary approach known as the scientific method. This is the actual process of conducting experiments, critiquing, and understanding models and validating hypotheses. The scientific method allows you to look at beliefs subjectively and lets you choose from different beliefs. The belief that most precisely explains evidence is the most logical and closest to reality. While this may sound intuitive, before the emergence of scientific method, mass beliefs were based on tradition, common sense, dogma, faith, or revelation. You can think of the disciplines of science, physics, chemistry, biology, as being similar to archaeology. Humans didn't invent them, they discovered them. Therefore, if all human knowledge was destroyed tomorrow, as long as we have the scientific method and time, we will be able to rediscover all of our scientific knowledge. Science is stunningly precise for describing material phenomena. The worldview of scientific materialism attempts to apply the narrow knowledge of material phenomena to consciousness. It postulates that consciousness arises from matter and is confined to the brain. In other words, the brain creates consciousness. In this model of reality, the brain is a computer that runs the program of awareness we know as consciousness. Consciousness ceases to exist when the brain stops functioning. In the worldview of scientific materialism, life can be considered essentially meaningless 
because it arises from random chance as a play of molecules and is destroyed at death. The worldview of scientific materialism has been strongly challenged from both outside science and within. With the development of quantum mechanics in the early 20th century, the notion of matter being the fundamental building block of reality has changed. Matter is a manifestation of a deeper underlying reality called the quantum field, or the field. And the field is affected by consciousness. The universe can be better explained as constructed from consciousness rather than from matter. The worldview of religion offers some ideas about consciousness and its purpose, but the ideas vary drastically among the 4,000-plus faiths that exist today. Since evidence-based inquiry is not part of religion, no method is provided for validating these ideas. The followers must accept the ideas on faith, a core limitation that paves the way for degeneration into fundamentalism. It's important to understand that religions didn't always exist in the institutionalized form we see today. Take the ancient Eastern concept of Dharma, which translates to a way of life. It has nothing to do with believing in a religious doctrine. Spirituality was about the gentle nurturing of one's connection with the world, not about blindly following beliefs. This changed around 2,000 years ago with modern religions. Although many religions started out with the mystical insight of an individual, they were quickly taken over by the disharmonious belief in exclusive salvation, which proposes that only one path is right. This doctrine divides humanity into believers and non-believers. Believers see non-believers as flawed and consider it their holy duty to convert them using any means necessary, including manipulation, force, and torture. If we look at the dark history of conversion, the conversion of rulers was followed by the compulsory conversion of subjects, often resulting in genocide and ethnic cleansing of whole nations, such as of the old Prussians between the 10th and 13th centuries. With institutionalization and association with state, religions have been able to gather overwhelming power which has served them rather than humanity, leading to corruption, colonization, and slavery. In the past few hundred years, the power of religion has been weakened with the rise of science, greater connectedness of the world, and democracy, where basic rights are protected despite one's religious beliefs. Yet, religion remains a dominant force in many parts of the planet and keeps creating division, conflict, terrorism, and war. Scientific materialism is riddled with gaps, and religions require blind faith in beliefs without offering any method of validating them. Science, by its denial of spiritual reality, leaves people feeling their lives have no purpose. Religions were meant to align us with higher wisdom, but have instead become instruments of disharmony and manipulation. The result is the same for most people, a life without purpose and meaning. Fortunately, an alternate worldview has emerged in the past hundred years. Scientific spirituality, as the name suggests, combines scientific method with spirituality. The goal is to create a model of reality based on actual experiences, including out-of-body experience, near-death experience, past-life regression, higher yoga, and mystical experiences. These phenomena present overwhelming evidence that consciousness exists outside of the physical body. While the mainstream scientific community is still resistant to these ideas, it does not have any alternate models to explain the observations. Take xenoglossy, for example, children who can understand a language to which they have had no exposure. The New York Evening Post, November 10, 1930, reported the case of a four-year-old girl from Warsaw, Marie Skotnicki. Although her parents spoke only Polish, she developed a habit of talking to herself in a foreign tongue that no one could understand. Later, it was determined to be pure Gaelic, a language she'd never learned or even heard. 
This phenomenon cannot be explained away by gene theory. The attempts to model spiritual phenomena lead to the theory of reincarnation. In this theory, consciousness is neither destroyed as proposed by scientific materialism, nor judged as proposed by religions, but continues on to a higher dimension, from where it has an integrated perspective of all lifetimes. Imagine it being like waking from a dream. When we wake up, we transition from the dream reality into the waking reality, without losing our sense of self. To give a deeper explanation, using the analogy of computers, consciousness uses the brain to experience physical reality. In the same way, we can use virtual reality equipment to experience computer-generated reality. From this perspective, known as the simulation hypothesis, the universe is a grand simulation, similar to massive multiplayer games that exist on our planet. Each incarnation is a play, with individual consciousness, known as the higher self, or the soul, being the player. Billionaire head of SpaceX, Elon Musk, is on record as saying, we're most likely in a simulation. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson agrees, giving better than 50-50 odds that the simulation hypothesis is correct. I wish I could summon a strong argument against it, but I can find none, he concluded. If you'd like to learn more about reincarnation, there's a video on our website which goes deeper into the topic. The theory of reincarnation leads to the question, why do we incarnate? What's the purpose of the grand simulation? The quest for the answer has taken decades of research into past life regression, pre-birth planning, higher mystical experiences, and channeled material. The conclusion is that the purpose of reincarnation is the evolution of consciousness. Each incarnation adds to the learning of the soul. As the source expands, it expands through individuated portions of itself, which is each one of us. Each reality is like a school that offers specific lessons that allow the soul to grow. When all the lessons from a particular reality have been learned, consciousness is ready to graduate to higher levels. In an infinite universe, there are infinite dimensions where this learning happens. As consciousness grows, it manifests higher and purer qualities of the source energy, which is the animating force behind all creation. On planet Earth, the primary lesson we are learning now is how to move from fear to love and from suffering to joy. Here are the practical steps from the worldview of scientific spirituality. First, know yourself as a divine being because you are an aspect of the Source. You are giving the Source an opportunity to look through your eyes and experience its own creation. This knowledge removes mental distortions such as fear. If you are the source, what is there to be afraid of? There is no reason to fumble in the dark when you realize that you are the light itself. Get rid of toxic thought patterns that contaminate mass consciousness. In particular, you are not a sinner. You are not a frivolous creation of a judgmental and petty God who wants you to obey His will. That is just a story made up by institutions that want to control you. It is time to take your power back from those institutions and walk on this earth as manifestations of the Source Energy, expressing the primal joy and love that you are. Second. Stop judging and criticizing yourself for perceived flaws. There are no flaws, only aspects of perfection to be explored. This is similar to art, which can always be improved upon, but that doesn't mean it's flawed. Instead of self-judgment, treat yourself with compassion and self-love. Third, you are one with all conscious beings and entire creation. Once you see others as source, you let go of the need to control them, manipulate them, 
or have power over them. You also stop judging them for perceived imperfections. Instead, you treat them with love and compassion because they are extended parts of your being. So honor them, offer them your love through service, and make relationships the joyous journey of creativity, genuine communication, and shared experience. Fourth, the material and the spiritual are the same. You did not come here to transcend physicality, because physicality is a manifestation of the Source. You came here to perceive physicality as divine, and in the process become an instrument of joy. This requires you to examine deeply held beliefs about physicality, including the expression of sexuality. Let go of shame and guilt associated with expressions of physicality and ask yourself, how would I express my physicality if I knew myself as a divine being? Fifth, know that your incarnation has a built-in purpose. The purpose is to explore physicality, relationships, service, and your own highest potential. You are here to manifest higher spiritual qualities in every aspect of your daily life. This is a divine undertaking, one that may take many incarnations to perfect. But the journey should be taken with a spirit of gratitude and purpose, not as a burden or suffering. All suffering is a mental illusion that exists so that you can transcend it and know yourself as the Source, the Absolute Reality.